Let's show that circles have constant curvature. So let's take a circle. This circle can be parameterized as the position vector function with an x component of r cosine of t and a y component of r sine of t, where r is the radius of this circle. And this will be for the parameter interval from 0 to 2 pi. Let's show that as long as r is greater than 0, the curvature is a constant value equal to 1 over the radius of the circle. To do that, let's look at the definition of curvature. Curvature as a function of arc length is defined as the rate of change of a unit tangent vector with respect to arc length. However, if, you're, if you have a parameterized position vector like we have here, it is often more convenient to express curvature in terms of the parameter. And when we do that, we would get curvature is equal to 1 over the speed of the curve. The speed of the curve is just the magnitude of the velocity of the curve times the rate at which a unit tangent vector changes with respect to our parameter t on the curve. So this is what we are going to evaluate for this curve. Well, let's look at the velocity of our curve. The velocity of our curve is equal to the rate at which our curve changes with respect to the parameter t. This is the derivative with respect to t of our position vector function given by r cosine of t for the x component and r sine of t for the y component. This velocity is just found by applying the derivative operator to each component of our position vector function. This would give us minus r sine of t for the x component of velocity and r cosine of t for the y component of velocity. The speed, otherwise known as the magnitude of velocity, is equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of the component of velocity. This means that the speed is given as the square root of r squared times the quantity sine squared of t plus cosine squared of t. Now you might remember that sine squared of t plus cosine of squared of t is equal to 1, which means that the magnitude of the velocity of our curve is equal to r, the radius of the curve. Now that we have the velocity of the curve and the magnitude of the velocity of the curve, let's find the unit tangent vector represented by the curve. Remember, unit tangent vector is defined to be the derivative of our position vector over the magnitude of the derivative of our position vector. This is just the velocity of our curve divided by the speed of our curve. The unit tangent vector then is, well, the velocity is minus r sine of t r cosine of t for the x and y components respectively, and we already showed that the magnitude of the velocity, the speed of the curve, is equal to r. So the r's cancel from each term, 
and we get the unit tangent vector for a circle of radius r is equal to minus sine of t for the x component, cosine of t for the y component. Let's do one more thing. Let's evaluate the derivative of this unit tangent vector with respect to the parameter t, because we'll need that to find the curvature. So the derivative of this unit tangent vector with respect to the parameter t is equal to minus cosine of t minus sine of t. This was found by just differentiating the x and y components respectively. Now we have all the pieces we need to find the curvature as a function of the parameter t. Remember, the curvature as a function of the parameter t is equal to the speed of the curve, which is just the magnitude of the curve's velocity, times the rate at which the unit tangent vector changes with respect to the parameter t. And it's the magnitude of that. So remember, the speed of the curve was just equal to its radius, r. And the derivative of the unit tangent vector of the curve is just given by minus cosine of t and minus sine of t for the x and y components respectively. Well, the magnitude of the vector with components minus cosine of t and sine of t is equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. Now once again, look at what we have. We have cosine squared t plus sine squared t underneath the square root. And we know that to be 1. So this means that the curvature for a circle of radius r is equal to 1 over r. This is a constant. Because the circle has a radius, the reciprocal of the radius represents the curvature of that circle. So in other words, the bigger the radius of a circle is, the smaller the curvature. And the smaller the radius of a circle is, the bigger the curvature. Let's look at that. Let's look at two circles. The first circle will have a relatively small radius. The second circle will have a much bigger radius. Let's look at two unit tangent vectors on these circles. So we will compare the unit tangent vectors per length of arc. So if we look on the smaller circle, let's choose a length of arc equal to about one quarter of that circle. So this will be our delta s, if you will. Now we will choose the same length of arc on the larger circle. This will be delta s as well. Let's see how the curvature changes for each of these circles. For the smaller circle, let's choose a unit tangent ve vector to be on the right tip of the circle. We will take this to be about 75 units approximately. And then let's take another unit tangent vector to be at the end of our delta s. That will be also approximately 75 units. For the larger circle, we will take our first unit tangent vector, about 75 units, and our second unit tangent vector, which it's kind of hidden. Um, actually, let me move this out of the way so we could see it more clearly. 
And then our second unit tangent vector being tangent to the circle, we'll take that to be about 75 units as well, right about there. So let's compare the curvature for each of these circles. To do that, we'll put the vectors, the unit tangent vectors for the circle of smaller radius, tail to tail. And let's remember that the change in the unit tangent vector is going to be found by attaching a vector from the head of the first unit ve tangent vector to the tail of the second one. So this represents the change of the unit tangent vector for for this given change in arc length for the circle of smaller radius. Now let's do the circle of larger radius. So the circle of larger radius will do the same, put the two vectors tail to tail. We'll construct the third vector that represents the change in the unit vector for this arc length going from head to head. And there we are right there. Let's now compare the magnitudes of these two vectors. So if we measure the magnitude of the vector from the larger radius circle, that magnitude is about 43 pixels. And for the magnitude of the change of the unit vector for the larger circle, that one is about 109 pixels. So clearly, for the smaller circle, the change in the unit tangent vector per arc length for the smaller circle is bigger than the change in the unit tangent vector per arc length for the larger circle, which means the curvature for the smaller circle is larger than the curvature for the larger circle. And that makes sense because we had shown that curvature for a circle is equal to one over the radius. So the smaller the radius, the more curved the circle is.